Hey, Shalom. <clears throat> First and foremost, I'm going to give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Chakodash. That's all praises to the Heavenly Father. His true name in the Hebrew is Yahweh. In his son's name, who the world is the call Jesus Christ, his real name in the Hebrew is Yahweh Shah. I also give a praise, honor, and glory unto the Hebrew Chakodash, the Holy Spirit, which is a force and entity that makes his edification possible. I want to say Shalom to all you sincere hearted Akian Wa Akwath. <clears throat> that you brothers and sisters make your bodies a living sacrifice on a daily basis in this wicked and adulterous generation. I also want to give double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone who tells his truth and who rule well. Right, and um, this morning we're going to touch into um, what well, we're going to finish in the book of Psalms, the 10th chapter. Uh, yesterday we went through verses 1 through 9. And in this um, this lesson we're going to go through verses uh, 10 through, I believe it stops here at 18. Right, so... Um, you know, nonetheless, you know, uh, Lord willing, you know, Abaratazah, this lesson will be edifying unto the elect of the nation of Israel, which consists of us so-called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans and Israelite foreigners that's scattered throughout the earth, right, that's turning back into our power in true sincerity and, and uh, humbleness, man, right? So um, this is uh, Psalms chapter 10 and verse 10. As a matter of fact, we'll, what we'll do uh, is grab the context here in verse 9 and we'll read on down. All right, we read this yesterday. It says, He lieth in wait secretly as a lion in his den. He lieth in wait to catch the poor. He he doth catch the poor when he draweth him into his net. Yeah, and as we was touching to yesterday, this chapter is pretty much a, a psalm of David, right, complaining against the wicked, right, which we understand that the wicked, our chief enemy as a nation of Israel, is the nation of Edom, right? Esau, Edom, which is the uh, so-called white man, the so-called white race, right? Starting with their elite, <clears throat> you know, the elite banking families and uh, everyone else on down, right? Because they all have, you know, a wicked and evil mindset, you know, towards us Israelites. And that's just how the Lord, you know, uh, made this movie to be pursuant to Genesis, the 25th chapter, right? How we were struggling in the womb, meaning oppressing and fighting each other in the womb of our foremother, uh, Rebecca, man, right? So, um, Psalms chapter 9, so like it's Psalms chapter 10 and 9 again, he lieth and wait secretly as a lion in his den. He lieth and wait to catch the poor, that's right. <clears throat> and Esau, right, his eyes are ultimately against the poor, which is us Israelites, man, right? We have, this, we have the lowest, you know, um, social status, if you will, right? Everything is, is ultimately set out to be a snare and a trap against us, right? But he does it secretly, right? And, and, and ultimately, by the ways how he governs his laws and legislations, man, right? To where he guises it as if it's not, it's not out open and blatant as it was in times past when we were in hardcore slavery under this man. Now he's doing these things, you know, uh, with his pen of legislation, right? So it says he does catch the poor. When he draweth him into his net. Yeah, now that word net goes into a system. And he wants all of us into his system, man. Verse 10. He croucheth and humbleth himself that the poor may fall by his strong ones. That's right. He croucheth and humbleth himself. Meaning what? He takes on the uh, the guise or the appearance of being humble. Of being your friend. You see? As a matter of fact, let's grab this in the book of Sirach, the 12th chapter. Or so like it, the 19th chapter. And, our, and a lot of our people, most of our people, as a matter of fact, are uh, are deceived by this man. Because, you know, he doesn't come out in the open and say, hey, I'm the devil. You know, I'm your enemy. And I'm uh, my, my plan is to destroy you. All these, all these council meetings that we have is against you. You see? And that's why our people, you know, don't believe the message that's coming from this ministry, man. But... That's very well indeed the case. When you read Psalms, the 83rd chapter, there's a crafty counsel against this. All right. And all these nations, all these nations from so-called Chinese nation. Right. The, the Japanese nation. And of course, the, you know, the so-called, you know, uh, or, the, or the Edomite nation. Right. Uh, Ishmael, all these nations. They're all in, in, in uh, an alliance to, to, to cut us off and to destroy us forever, man. You see? But 
Esau Edom, he's the head of it, right? So this is uh, Sirach chapter 19 and verse 26. There is a wicked man that hangeth down his head sadly, but inwardly he is full of deceit. Yeah, right. He, he got his head down low, right, acting like he's humble, right? Oh, I'm here to help you. You know, and we, we see we see, you know, real live examples going on right now. All right, with, with your boy BG, right, and his um his humanitarian, you know, uh so called um agenda going to these poor, you know, hermetic, you know, countries out there in Africa, right, and uh pretty much going there and saying, Hey, well we want we wanna help you. We know that you're we know that you're you know, you don't have, you know, uh good health care system set in place so you know take these take these uh, uh inoculations right we know you don't have water we know you don't have food right just 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 follow us right and and what happens shortly after Esau leaves those lands those people die and that that country is greatly destroyed he takes all their resources right totally runs a muck on them man but that's what he's done to our people, right? Ever since he came into power during the time of the Greeks, man. You see? And and the human mind really can't fathom the, 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 the hatred that this man has for us as Israelites. You see? He cause he hates his own people too. He hates he hates everybody because he's the devil, right? Right, but our minds really can't fathom how much he truly hates us, man. This is why scripture tells us in uh, Sirach, the 12th chapter, to never trust thy enemy, man. Never trust thy enemy. Right? So, going back to Sirach 19 and verse 26, there is a wicked man that hangeth down his head sadly, but inwardly he is full of deceit. Yeah, so outward he appears to be your friend, but inwardly, man, he's about to destroy you. Look what he did to the Native Americans, our brothers. You know, in the Latino tribes, when he came over here during the time of uh, Christopher uh, Columbus, man. All right, made all these uh, pe uh, peace treaties and, and pacts, you see. Saying, hey, well, we promise if you if you let us have this portion of the land, you know, we'll we'll do such and such for you. You know, but what did he do? He just ended up slaughtering them. So, uh, what was that? Psalms 55 and verse 20. Right, how his mouth is, is full of. Let's grab that real quick. This is Psalm chapter fifty-five, and verse uh, twenty. He had put forth his hands against such as be at peace with him. Yeah, those that were at peace with you, that's who you destroyed. You know, the Native Americans, the uh, you know, the Seminole Indians. Did nothing against you, but but teach you how to bathe, hunt, fish, plant agriculture, live off this land. So he says he he had put forth his hands against such as be at peace with him. He had broken his covenant. Yeah, you broke all the covenants that you made, all the all the peace treaties, all the pacts. Right? He says, verse 21, the words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. See? And the same thing is going on today. But our people are so simple, they think because he gives you good credit, so-called, which that's slavery. He gives you he gives you a so-called good job, you know. He allows you to be, you know, uh, integrated with him in his neighborhoods, his schools. Now you think that this man has changed? No, not at all, man. As a matter of fact, that's even worse. That's that's the seat at his at his finest right there. At least in times past, he 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 made a, you know, evident that he hated us when he was hanging us from the trees, you know, just slaughtering us without hesitation. Right, but that same wicked mindset is still inside of him, right? But he's just more deceitful with it now, and this is where the wisdom of these scriptures, you know, have to come into play. Understanding that this man has not changed, no matter how much he tries to humble himself down, right, is ultimately for his agenda. Psalms fifty-five and verse twenty-one: the words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet. Were they drawn swords? And that's how you know it's talking about Esau. Because he was given the uh, the gift of the sword, man. All right, his words were softer than oil. His his laws and legislation, how we'll we'll integrate you into our to our school systems. 
You see? Women's equality. You know, uh, blacks and whites can drink out the same water fountain. You know, right? You can work at the same jobs. It sounds good. Sounds peaceful. But no, war is in his heart, man. It's a systematic, you know, um, it's a systematic warfare, if you will. Ultimately, a spiritual warfare. Ephesians, the sixth chapter. See, and if you're not spiritual, you're going to be destroyed, man. Because you don't know, you don't know that you're on a battlefield. So, Sirach 19 and verse 27 again, casting, his, casting down his countenance and making as if he heard not. So he's acting like he, he's innocent to, to, you know, to things. Like, he, like he's not up to the no. Like he doesn't know what's going on. Right? And we all see it. We see it on the, on the small level. You know, walking around these, these, these low-level peon, you know, so-called white people from day to day. You may be at the grocery store or, you know, wherever, and they give you that, that hey, buddy, that hey, buddy smile, you know, where they got their mouth closed and they lips all the way up to their nose and give you that, <laughs> you see. That's just a small, you know, a small microcosm, right? But ultimately, that's what the elites do in the, in the form of their laws and legislations, and in the form of the system, the net that he has prepared to um, to fall down upon our people, most of our people. And the Lord is, is the one that's ultimately orchestrating it to remove all the simple and degenerates out of our nation, man. Have them to get caught up with the sword, right? Be, but the elect, right, has that eye salve to understand, no, nah, man, this nigga hate us, man. You know, and we're going to abstain away from his, from his ways, right, as much as possible. Well, completely pursuant to Isaiah the 10th chapter, right? So going back to Sirach 1927, casting down his countenance and making as if he heard not where he is not known, he would do thee a mischief before thou be aware. So yeah, where it may seem like he may not be listening or he's not there in the situation, right? He's going to do the mischief when you're not aware. That's that's him crouching as a as a as a lion behind the thickets. And he's going to come out suddenly, man, and attack you. And then you're going to know. That this man hated you, but it's going to be too late. It says, verse 28, and if for want of power, he be hindered from sinning, yet when he findeth opportunity, he will do evil. That's right. And if for want for power, that's all he wants is power, right? Because he has the money, he has the wealth, he has the fatness of the earth and do of heaven. He just wants more power. He wants to uh, ultimately, you know, uh, show himself to be God, you see? So if for one of that, if he be hindered from sinning, meaning if he didn't have the opportunity to sin, it says yet when he finds opportunity, he will do evil. You see, and this is why the devil is about to come down with great wrath, because he knows he has a short time. You see. He doesn't want to be hindered from his ultimate agenda that he has against us, erecting the end to the W to the O, which. You know, really, you know, all formulates in. Destroying the nation of Israel, man. And our people cannot see that. This man, was, he, wants, he wants to bring forth a, a complete total genocide against us. And we see what he's doing to the Palestinians right now. That's genocide that's going on, right? <laughs> but yet our people, oh, it ain't gonna happen to me. Okay, nigga. All right, just wait. So going back to Psalm chapter 10 and verse uh, 10. He croucheth and humbleth himself that the poor may fall by his strong ones. Verse 11. And, and the strong ones is talking about, talking about his military. And we're going to touch into that here in a second. Verse 11. He has said in his heart, the most high have forgotten. He hideth his face. He will never see it. That's right. So that's what these devils think. They think that the most high right, has forgotten everything that they've done unto the world, man. Let alone as Israelites, but unto the whole world and the planet earth itself. And this is why the Lord says in Psalms, the 50th chapter, you thought that I was all together one such as thee. This is Psalms chapter 50 and verse, let's start at verse 20. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother, right? And who's Esau's brother? Us Israelites, Jacob, Yaquah. Thou slanderest thine own mother's son, right? He's the accuser of the brethren. Pursuant to Revelation 12, it says, um, 21, these things hast thou done, and I kept silent. So this man has done all these things in the earth, man. Revelation, uh, the sixth chapter, 
How he's that red horse with that sword taking peace from the earth. And the whole time, the Lord kept silence. Right. The Lord allowed this man to come over here to the Americas, decimate and slaughter hundreds of millions of Israelites and other people, man. <laughs> and the Lord kept silence. So he says, these things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such an one as thyself. So you thought that the Lord was like you. You thought that the Lord was wicked. You thought that the Lord is not going to bring justice. You thought the Lord is a so-called white man. You, you, you put forth, you know, images of, of, of the Most High and His Son, the picket as you. You see, wicked, evil, not bringing forth justice. You hate, you hate Israelites. You deceive yourself, man. It says, Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such as one as thyself, but I will reprove thee. And the Lord's doing that right now, man, by him raising up the 144,000 prophets, right? Right here in Babylon, the great, and throughout the four corners of the earth. And what are we doing? We're reproving you, pursuant to 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter. For that day shall not come except there be a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed. So us revealing you, that's you being reproved. We're bringing out all your, we're bringing out your whole record, man, from what you've done, starting from the womb, right, going to the time of the Greeks, all the way up until now. And we're reproving you. That's what this ministry is about. It's about rebuke, right, of, uh, to our people and rebuke, well, ultimately everybody, man, and setting things back in proper order, as he's about to say. But I will reprove thee. And set them in order before thine eyes. And who's the them that he set in order? The elect, man. Revelation 11 chapter. And that's why great fear is falling upon you Edomites and all you heathen, man. Because the Lord is taking diligent inquisition right now. And shortly after, you know, presiding after that diligent inquisition, the book's going to be closed, man. You go into the courtroom. Right? Once they, once they get all the evidence and, and the judge looks it over. Right, they close that book. He slams down the gavel and he sentences you, man. And that's what Yahweh Shah, the, the the judge himself, is about to do. He's about to he's about to slam down that gavel, man. Let him that is filthy be filthy still. Let him that is righteous be righteous still. And he's gonna put he's gonna put you heathens in slavery, man. Starting with you, you elite Edomites, you uh, Malachites, man. Cause you've been the chief of all the wickedness of the earth, man. Funding all the slave trades, funding all this wickedness. You see, and we're at, we're at the we're at the tail end of these of this man, All right? And this is what our forefather David, King David, was prophesying about in Psalms, the tenth chapter. This this whole chapter is a, is a is a prayer of a complaint against you Edomites, man. David was in the spirit, man, and the Lord said Himself that David is a man after my own heart, man. So the house of David is going to have that same mentality, man. Man, fuck you Edomites, man. Y'all ain't nothing. And the Lord gonna put y'all in slavery, man. And he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna. You see the uh, the thumbnail I got on this picture, man. It says the Son of the Most High returns as an angry man of war, depopulating the earth. You see, that's what Yahweh Shah is about to do. He's about to depopulate this earth, man. Isaiah the sixty third chapter speaks about who is this that comes from Basra with dyed garments, man, as he's been treading the wine press alone, none to help him, man. Yahweh Shah has uh, enmity and hatred against you people, man. Even two-thirds of his own people, man, that has taken the side of the devil, taken the side of you Edomites, man. So there's a great judgment about to come up on this earth, man. All right? So uh, uh, Psalms chapter 10 and verse, um, let's see, 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 he has said in his heart, the most I have forgotten. He hideth his face. He will never see it. Yeah, because another reason why is why? Because Ecclesiastes 8 and 11. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore, the hearts of the sons and men are fully set in them to do evil. So this says in verse 12, David says, Arise, <coughs> Salaki, arise, O Lord, Yahweh Bashamal Shah. <coughs> o God, lift up thine hand. Forget not the humble. Let's read that again. He says, Arise, O Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shah. And that's what our Lord is doing right now. Right? For a long time, he withdrew himself from us. 
You know, he allowed, you know, all these atrocities, these curses, ultimately, because of our disobedience. He allowed all these things to happen, and he allowed you Edomites to have your way on us. As a matter of fact, let's get this in Revelation 13. This is uh, Revelation chapter 13 and verse 7. And it was given unto him. And when you go into uh, this chapter, it's going into the system of the Edomites, right? So it says, and it was given unto him, talking about Esau, to make war with the saints. So the Lord allowed you to make war with us. It says, and to overcome them, and power was given unto him, given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. So the Lord gave you power over us. For a time, times, and a dividing of time. Three and a half years or 350 years, right? From the time of 1619 to about uh, 1969, 1970, right? So we're a, a, our captivity is almost up, man, right? So this is why heavy reproof is coming down upon you Edomites, man. You see? Because down the Lord, he's about to redeem his elect. Of the, na of the nation of Israel, man. And he's arising. That's that's proof. You see? Um, let's grab this here in the book of Isaiah 42. Isaiah 42 and verse 13. The Lord, Yahweh Bashem Shah shall go forth as a mighty man. See, he shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. And who is he jealous over? Us Israelites. And that's why he's uh, stirring up Middle East, you know, conflicts right now. Middle East tensions over there in the, um, 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 it's like a Valley of Jehoshaphat or Yahweh Shapat. You see, the Gulf of Arabia. So he says, the Lord shall go forth. As a mighty man, he shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. Because that's where he's going to plead for us, man. For the controversy of Zion. It says, he shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. And who's the Lord's enemies? Starting with you Edomites, the wicked. And everybody else that's holding, that's holding down to his side. It says, I have long time holding my peace. See, so for a long time, the Lord held back. He held his peace, man. He didn't say nothing. He didn't He didn't do no, no massive judgments upon you Edomites. See, now here and there, you know, there'll be particular judgments, you know, upon you Edomites, like the Civil War, or, you know, little skirmishes or whatever. But for the main part, for the most part, y'all haven't been judged, man. Y'all haven't been afflicted like, you know, you've afflicted these other nations or like we as Israelites have been afflicted by the Lord. So he says, I had long time holding my peace. I had been still and refrained myself. So the Lord, he just, <laughs> he just folded his hands, seemed like, right? He says, now will I cry like a travailing woman. And a travailing woman, a woman that's in childbirth, man. Bro, it, it, it's, it's, it is a, um, that's a sight to see. She's screaming, she hollering. She's trying to squeeze everybody's hand and, you know, trying to find relief. But it's not going to stop until that deliverance comes, though. You see? So until the nation of Israel, the elect of the nation of Israel is delivered, right? It's going to be all out hell, man. It's going to be a bloody scene. Yeah, when a woman's given, in, given over in childbirth, it's blood, you know, bodily fluids everywhere, right? But it's going to be the blood of you Edomites, man. You see? It says... I will cry like a travailing woman. I will destroy and devour at once. See? So, so at, at, one, at one time, in one setting, the Lord's going to destroy and devour, man. See, he's going to come back in his angelic, you know, uh, appearance. Isaiah 47, he says, I, I shall not meet thee as a man. And he's going to totally decimate this place along with the holy host of angels, man. Millions upon millions upon millions of angels are going to come accompany him. It's going, to, it's going to be a complete KO, man. It's going to be effortless <laughs> and flawless what Yahweh Shah and the, and the angels about to do, man. And that's why David tells in Psalm 37, don't fret over the wicked. 
you know? Because for they shall soon be cut down like the grass, man. When it's all said and done, this is going to, man, it's going to be a, a big sigh of relief. And it's going to, it's going to, Psalms 126, it says it's going, uh, it's going to be like a dream, you know, when we were delivered, you know, from our captivity. It's going to seem so quick. It's going to be like that, man. So Psalms chapter 10 and verse 12, it says, Arise, O Lord, O power, lift up thine hand, forget not the humble. And the Lord's not going to forget the humble. Because the humble is the elect. Right? It says, Wherefore doth the wicked contend the most high? He hath said in his heart, Thou will not require it. Now let's go into this word require real quick. So like, give me one second. Uh, all right. So we're gonna go into this word acquire. Oh, and Salaki, by the way, uh, <clears throat> when we had mentioned the uh, the the now river area, Valley Jehoshaphat. Right, it's known is also known as the Persian Gulf. Right, so uh, but going back to Psalms chapter ten and verse thirteen, when you go into this word require, it is Strong's H, eighteen seventy five. The Rosh says to resort to, seek, seek with care. Uh, inquire. To seek with demand. Demand, require, investigate. See? And that's what the Lord is doing right now. The Lord is investigating you Edomites. What is that? Luke the 12th chapter. There's nothing hidden that shall not be made manifest. There's a real time, a real live, up and close, personal investigation going on. This is why you have a lot of chariot sightings, you know, especially here in Babylon the Great, but all over the world. The angels are investigating and the men of the Lord which we're known as spies and witnesses. We're investigating. You see? It says to practice, to study, follow, seek with application. So along with this uh, requiring or this investigation, it requires to study. You see? Just like, you know, if you're in a court of law, all right, well, that the lawyer, the attorney or whatnot, all right, when they're trying to, you know, find means of accusation, you know, against the uh, against the criminal. All right, well, what would they do? They have to study. You know, they have to study the matter. They have to study, you know, what, you know, all the evidences, you know. And that's what's happening right now. As a matter of fact, let's get this in Proverbs 25. In verse uh, 2. It is the glory of the Most High to conceal a thing. And what is the Lord concealed? Well, he's concealed a lot. He concealed himself. You know, his true names, you know, the Heavenly Father's name and the Son's name. He concealed who we are. He concealed who the wicked is. But now, right, there is all being revealed. So it is the glory of the Most High to conceal a thing. But the honor of kings is to search out a matter. See? So the Lord is using us to require it of this man. You see? He's using us, you know, starting with our apostles and elders and their teachers to search out. All right, all these hidden things. And now we're bringing it to the light. You see? And this is why it's going to be a great persecution against us because the darkness hates the light. All right? But they're not going to prevail. You know, Matthew the 16th chapter, your house shall told Peter, for the gates of hell shall not prevail against thee. Let's get this in the NLT, Psalms 10 and 13. It says, why do the wicked, uh, why do the wicked get away with despising the most high? They think <clears throat> the Most High will never call us to account. Yeah, and they're greatly deceived, man. You know, Second Ezra the sixth chapter. We'll grab that real quick. So, Second Ezra chapter six, in verse eighteen, and it said, oh, "Let's see here. Yeah, we we'll just start eighteen. And it said, Behold, the days come." 
that I would begin to draw nigh. And the Lord is drawing nigh right now. And to visit them that dwell upon the earth. Yeah, we know that because there's particular signs, right, that go along with that. You know, wars, rumors of wars, earthquakes in diverse places, uproars of the people, famines, plagues, pestilences. You see? Verse 19, and will begin to make inquisition of them what they be that have hurt unjustly with their unrighteousness. Now, what does that word inquisition mean? Judicial investigation. Judicial investigation and judicial. All right, that comes from, you know, the word judge. And who's investigating it? The judges of the earth, starting with Yahweh Shah. Well, Yahweh, why Yahweh Shah? And the 144,000, you know, uh, judges, kings. You see? So there's an inquisition going on. There's a, there's a judicial investigation, act or process of inquiring. Investigation, searching into, see, it's searching into, all right. And where do we search? We search into these scriptures, man. And we use, you know, particular, you know, historical talking points, right? It says, a seeking, a legal examination, a seeking of grounds for accusation. See, so as this devil is accusing us falsely, we're accusing him. And pursuant to the law in Deuteronomy the 18th chapter, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, you know, you got it. Now, that's how you accuse. See, and the Lord has raised up his two witnesses here in the latter days, pursuant to Revelation 11 chapter, Northern Kingdom and Southern Kingdom. Right. And we have the right report who have believed our report. Right. So the Lord is requiring it of this devil. The Lord is investigating Right, all the things that this that this man has done, he just hid himself for a while. But we're in the times of inquisition. Verse nineteen, and I will begin to make inquisition of them, what they be that have hurt unjustly with their unrighteousness, and when the affliction of Zion shall be fulfilled. See, so simultaneously, along with our captivity almost ending, right, that's when the Lord will be making a diligent inquisition upon the earth. And we know that we're about to get out of slavery, man. Right? Looking at uh, all these signs going on in the earth and the very fact that the Lord gave us his truth. Right? That's proof that we're about to be uh, out of slavery. All right? Let me get this in the GNT. Yeah, and the GNT, it says, uh, <clears throat> starting at verse 18, second verse 6 and 18, it said, the time is near when I will come to judge the people living on the earth. I will punish those who have hurt others with their in injustice. And who's that? Esau, Edom. He, hurt, he's had, he has hurt everyone with his injustice, man, with his wickedness. Sirach 10 and 8. It says, Jerusalem's humiliation or slavery will come to an end. And this age, which is about to pass away, will have the final seal put on it. Then I will follow. Then the following signs. The books will be open across the sky for all to see. And that's what's happening. The books are open across the sky in the form of the Internet. All right. You got you got the men of the Lord having the books, having the Bible, you know, open, you know, reading out the scriptures, breaking it down correctly. Right, publishing it on YouTube and the internet, right? You know, and, and those and the, and the internet signals from the from the um, you know airways is is raining down doctrine, man. So that's the books open across the sky. It's talking about the Bible, man. You see, letting us know what that diligent inquisition is taking place right now, and the Lord's judgment is about to come. So going back to Psalm chapter ten and verse thirteen, wherefore do the wicked contemn the Most High? He has said in his heart, thou will not require it. Right. And one of their main reasons, oh, well, slavery was a long time ago. Get over it. All right. Lord don't care about how long and to the Lord. Slavery was just because scripture says in uh, second Peter, the third chapter, you know, for uh, a thousand years unto us, it's just as one day unto the Lord. So slavery hasn't even been a full day yet. See, 
So the Lord's judgment is, and timing is way different than ours. So this is Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 15. That which had been is now, and that which is to be, Salakia, and that which is to be hath already been, and the Most High requireth that which is past. Meaning you're going to have to make an account of the things that, that you've done in the past, in history. The Lord's not like you Edomites to where, you know, he's, he's unjust, he's unrighteous, man. He takes diligent inquisition upon everything, all the affairs that happened upon the planet Earth that he created. Right. So this is a uh, Psalms 10 and 14. Thou has seen it. See, so David is saying, Lord, you've seen it. You've seen all these things. All right. Psalm 94. And verse. Seven. Let's start at verse um, four. So like in verse 3, it says, I'm just skimming through it. The, uh, it says, Lord, how long shall the wicked, how long shall the wicked triumph? How long shall they utter and speak hard things? And all the workers of iniquity boast themselves. They break in pieces thy people, O Lord, and afflict thine heritage. They slay the widow and the stranger and murder the fatherless. Yet they say the Lord shall not see. Neither shall the power or God of Jacob regard it. And David says this, understand you brutish, meaning stupid, among the people, and you fools, when will you be wise? He that planted the ear, shall he not hear? Meaning, he, the, the, the God that created the ears to hear on your head, does he not hear? He that formed the eye, shall he not see? <laughs> see? So the very fact that we, we can hear and we can see. We can smell, we can taste, we can touch, we can do all these things. We have all these emotions and things. All right, well, we have that because our Heavenly Father and His sons have it, man. And His son has it. See? So we can hear, we can see all the atrocities, right? And hear all the atrocities and oppressions in the earth. How much more the one that created it, that created the ear and the eyes to see. See? It says, He that chastiseth the heathen shall not he correct. He that teacheth man knowledge shall not he know. So the Lord, he taught us knowledge. He, he's the one that has given us, you know, brains and, and the billions upon billions upon billions of neurons, you know, to, to, to retain knowledge and information and to come up with particular calculations and things. So how much more him? See? So going back to Psalm chapter 10 and verse um, 14, thou hast seen it. For thou beholdest mischief, meaning you look at all this mischief and spite, to requit it, meaning to pay it back with thy hand. And who's the Lord's hand? Yahweh Shah. So the Heavenly Father is going to use Yahweh Shah. He's going to send Yahweh Shah and the Holy Host of Angels to come down and to pay, you know, to, to, to pay all this stuff back towards you Edomites. It says, The poor have committed himself unto thee. Thou art the helper of the fatherless. And who's the poor that's committing themselves unto thee? It's the elect. This is uh, Zephaniah chapter 3. Zephaniah 3 and 12. <clears throat> he says, I will also leave in the midst of thee an afflicted and poor people. And we're afflicted and we're poor. And they shall trust in the name of Yahweh Bashamal Shah. See? And that's all we can trust in. That's, and that's more than enough. Because with the name of Yahweh Bashamal Shah comes our salvation. You see? Comes a, re from, comes a redemption of us, man. And the destroying of our enemies. Verse 13. The remnant, meaning the elect of Israel, shall not do iniquity, nor speak lies. Neither shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth. For they shall feed and lie down, and none shall make them afraid. That's right. Yeah, and the and the, the elect, they're going to be found blameless. They're going to be found without iniquity. Why? Because Yahweh shall sacrifice his blood covered them. You see? Who shall lay anything to charge against the Lord's elect? It says, nor shall they speak lies. Yeah, that's right. Because the thing, the, the words that come out of their mouth 
It comes straight from Yahweh Shah. They have that new song, right? The true doctrine, without any deceit, any flattery, any gal, any hypocrisy, is the 100% truth. So going back to Psalm chapter 10 and verse 15, break thou the arm of the wicked and the evil man. Let's go into this word arm real quick. Strong's H, 22-20. And when you get the definition, it says arm, forearm, shoulder, strength, right? And that, because an uh, uh, arm of a man, right? And, you know, that's that's supposed to be his power, man. You know? A man has supposed to have strong arms. So, you know, applying that to a nation of people, right? What would be the arm? What, what would be the power of a nation? Their military. So let's continue to read. It says arm. As symbol of strength, forces, political, and military. See? So when David says, break thou their arm, meaning what? Break their political, break their uh, military strength. See? And that's the Lord taking away this man's gift, the gift of the sword. You see? Revelation, the 12th chapter, goes into how Yahweh Shah and the Holy Host of Angels fought against Michael. So like you fight against um, the devil and his angels, man. That's the Lord disarming. See, disarming, meaning to take away the arm or take away his strength. That's the Lord disarming this man's, you know, power structure. You see, with the Holy Host of Angels, the chariots, man, going to fight against this man. All right. So it says, break thou the arm of the wicked and the evil man. Seek out his wickedness till thou found none, till thou find none. And the Lord is seeking out all the nooks and crannies of this man's wicked rulership, man. This is uh, Lamentation chapter 4 in the NLT. Starting verse 21. Are you rejoicing in the land of Uz, you people of Edom? But you too. Must drink from the cup of the Lord's anger. You too will be stripped naked in your drunkenness. Oh, and, and, that, and that's the Lord, you know, uh, putting, putting these curses upon this man. Destroying his empire with the missiles, right? And putting him into slavery. Verse 22. Oh, beautiful Jerusalem, your punishment will end. You will soon return from exile, from slavery. And that's the time we end, man. Our punishment is almost done. All right, and we're going to go back home, starting with the elect. All the wicked of our people, are going to, the Lord's going to leave you right here and melt you. Because your mind stayed here anyway. You didn't want to be reformed and changed. You want to stay American. You want to stay black. You want to stay being a nigga. So all black people, all Mexicans, all Indians, you will stay right here. And the Lord's going to melt you. But all the elected na nation of Israel will be delivered and go back home says, but Edom, your punishment is just beginning. Soon your many sins will be exposed. See that? So this is just the beginning for you Edomites, man. This is just the beginning of the beginning. He says, but Edom, your punishment is just beginning. You see, and you see how much this man, he can't even, he can't even bear and take the word just coming out exposing him. We're not even doing nothing to you physically, man. You see? We just, we just reading words out of the Bible that you don't even believe in, but you're hurt already. And this is just the beginning. He's hurt so much to where he's about to persecute the prophets. He's got to set up little agents amongst the camps. That's how much he's hurt. But it says, but soon your punishment is, it says, but Edom, your punishment is just beginning. Soon your many sins will be exposed. Yeah, because although we bring out, you know, things, you know, in history and, you know, what not concerning what this man has done. There's so much that he has done that we're not going to truly be able to fathom it or understand it until the Lord upgrades us in our new bodies. And that's how the Lord is going to put his anger inside of us pursuant to Ezekiel 25th chapter, right? To lay upon you Edomites, man. Once we truly understand, right, how wicked you were against the Lord and against, you know, the, uh, the nation of Israel. Man. <laughs> That that man, that's that's why you're gonna get no mercy when you read in the Zonovan's Compact Bible Dictionary under uh, the word Edom or name Edom. It goes on to mention and says this is the only nation in the Bible 
that is promised no mercy from the Lord. You see, once we truly understand that everything that you've done and plan to do. Right. But once again, the Lord set you up. The Lord created you to do all this. You see, he created you to be destroyed. and He created America to be destroyed. Psalm chapter 10 and verse uh, 16. The Lord Yahweh is king forever and ever. The heathen are perished out of his land. That's right. Like Psalms 2 and 6 says, the Lord says, but I have set my holy king upon Mount Zion. That's who's going to rule and take over the planet Earth. It says, <clears throat> it says the heathen are perished out of his land. That's right. Yeah, the heathen, you're going to be uh, dispelled out of the land of Israel. Right now, you know, the, the Gentiles are trodden down our land. All right, but after, you know, World War III, the valley of Yahweh Shapat commences, man. Hey, it ain't gonna be it ain't gonna be no more Edomites in our land. You see, unless it's unless it's for you to, you know, build it up, you know, serve as slaves. But as far as you just wiggling and roaming around freely without yokes of chains and irons on your neck, uh uh, that ain't gonna happen. You're gonna be in total subjection. Verse 17, Lord Yahweh by Shemiah Shah, thou hast heard the desire of the humble. Thou will prepare their heart. Thou will cause thine ear to hear. That's right. And what's the desire of the humble? What's the desire of the elect? Let's get this in Revelation 13. Revelation 13 and 9. If any man have an ear, let him hear. Many of you have understanding because we all have ears. But if you have understanding, understand this. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. And who did all that? Who, who led into slavery? You Edomites and all you nations. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. So y'all are going to slavery and y'all are going to be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. And that's the part I want to harp upon. Right? Because David just says, Lord, thou hast heard the desire of the humble. And that's our desire. That's the patience and the faith of of the saints, man. And when you go into that word patience, it means to suffer for a long time. See, we've been, we've been, as we've been patiently waiting, we've been suffering, right, until we see this happen. And that's our faith that this will happen, man. So if you call yourself a saint or a believer in Yahweh by Shema Shah, right, well, you're going to have this expectation. You're going to have this desire. And the Lord's going to be preparing your mind for it, as we just read. It says, Thou will prepare their heart. Thou will cause thine ear to hear. And the Lord's preparing our heart, man, to see. To see this happen, man. You know, for the wicked to be slain and to go into slavery. So verse 18, Psalms 10 and 18. To judge the fatherless, the oppressed, that the man. It says to judge the fatherless and the oppressed. And we're the fatherless and the oppressed. We're without defense here. You see? And we're trodden down, man. We were oppressed by this man's system, right? It says that the man of the earth may no more oppress. And who's the man of the earth? The wicked, Job 9, 24, right? So that the man of the earth may no more oppress. What is that? Isaiah 14. How's the oppressor ceased? How's that golden city Babylon brought to not roughly paraphrasing? So that's what's about to happen, man. And that's what David was going into in the book of Psalms, the 10th chapter. You see, this was a prayer of a complaint against the wicked man and you read we're going to go through the book of psalms lord willing right as we continue to read this is a reoccurring theme man david stayed on you edomite's ass man he hated y'all you see and we hate you and the lord hates you we're not going to be like some israelite camps who's at uh igpk and, and, and uh iuic we don't hate you but god hates you no we hate you man you see we hate you utterly you see, and we, as a matter of fact, we don't hate you enough. You see, but the Lord's preparing our hearts, man. You know, to 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 put you put you people in slavery, and Lord willing, all right, we be a part of that number, the sincere of you know you Akim and myself, Lord willing, Abarataza. But that completes Psalms of Tim chapter. You know, Lord willing, you Akim and Akwa for edified. Till next time, we'll give all praise and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim Rachadash. I want to give double honor to the Apostle Elder's Great Millstone, DTA, Ababa Ball, Kramesh Rala, Shalom.